Hello, everybody, and welcome to Late Night Football. Welcome to the Match Reaction Show. It's uh, finished. West Brom and Champion nil. Manchester City five. That's the game I picked to watch. I mean, there's two games that happened simultaneously. Maybe I played the wrong game, but I picked that one. And I mean, the other one was also quite interesting. It was Southampton one, Arsenal three. And we'll talk more about that uh, at some other point uh, because there are some big. Game. There's a big game coming up for Arsenal uh, this weekend, and uh, the, I think this game will probably highlight that a little bit more later in the week. But for today, we're going to talk about uh, West against West Brom and Manchester City. And I've got to say, um, I mean, after watching that game, can you seriously think that any team can challenge Manchester City this season? I mean, I, 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 you know, I, I said this a little bit in jest, but I said the quadruple is on uh, a little while ago, month ago. It just feels now like that's more and more a possibility. I mean, it just becomes each week, it just becomes more and more of a possibility. Because if you look across teams, I, I can't right now think of a team. And this is, again, this is West Brom. This is a team that's probably going to be relegated at the, this, at the end of the season. We've got to quantify that. They're probably a championship team playing in the Premier League. Probably. All of that aside. But honestly, I mean, I, I, there's just something about this game that I was watching and I was thinking to myself, how many teams in Europe right now, in the Champions League right now, can realistically threaten Manchester City? Not beat them, but can realistically threaten them. Um, and there's only two or three. So, you know, it's just, it's just uh, something about this performance. And, and I put this tweet out. I said, the, thing, the striking thing wasn't the fact that they scored five goals, wasn't the fact that they kept a clean sheet, wasn't the fact that they scored five absolutely beautiful goals that they scored. I put this at half time, they only scored four, then they added a fifth one. Uh, but, you know, it's just the fact that it was so effortless. I mean, it just looked like, you know, it's City just, you know, you, there's games where, you know, you see teams win 2-0, 3-0, and, you, you, and, 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 it, and it looks like a huff and puff. It looks like, you know, there's a little bit of, of you know, running around, there's a little bit of, 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 of effort that's put in. City just don't look like that. It's like a machine. It's like a you know, like, like gliding on uh, I uh, on 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 ice or you know, it's on smooth surfaces on silk. It's just a matter of just going uh, you know pass after pass after pass. You know nothing works. So right, it's coming back. We win the ball back. We're going again. Pass pass. And then there's a goal. And then there's a second goal. And then there's a third goal. I mean, it's just it's just unbelievable. And and you know you watch that game you know what it what what it does is, as an as a rival fan it's just it demoralizes you like and for me i was thinking who's going to score a goal against this team how do you score a goal against this team how do you defend against this this team i mean it's to, it was just um you know a brilliant performance and, and 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 we'll pick manchester united because they're the closest team uh to, to manchester city i can't think of a game this season where they've had an effortless win they won games and they've had some good wins but it's never looked effortless. There's not been a single game that's looked effortless uh, for Manchester United. I mean, Sid Liverpool have had a couple, Leicester have had a couple. United haven't had that. So for me, I, I, I just don't think that there's a title challenge on right now uh, for, for, for Manchester United anyway. But I mean, for those of you who, who, you know, who want to think about United being uh, you know, realistically contending, I and mean, you just got to look at this performance and ask yourself, well, you know, where's the challenge coming from? And maybe United have a chance to show that against Sheffield, but I mean, it, it, this game just, you know, proves a lot of things. And this was a statement win from City if there was one. Uh, it was just brilliant. But, I mean, we had to talk about individual performances. I thought Gundogan was excellent today. I remember watching Gundogan actually uh, back in 2013 uh, when Dortman had that really amazing run to the, to the Champions League final. Probably were the best team in that tournament that year. Should have, you know, should have, maybe should have won it by him and by him and then did the treble, you know. And, and there was a lot of controversy around that. But it was, Gundogan was amazing in that run. And Gundogan and Lewandowski were two players that were absolutely sensational. And then Gundogan had that big injury that kept him out for almost for a, almost a year. He missed the World Cup for Germany as well, which he probably would have played. He missed that. He had he had then had a couple of lean years. You know, he was kind of there, but not quite there. Then comes to Manchester City. Where again, he's a, he's a cog in the wheel, not really, you know, not having really understood his role. He's played a CDM. He's played a different position. He doesn't quite understand what his role is. I think this season... Um, and maybe towards the fag end of last season, mostly this season, I think he's finally found a role that suits him. He's found something that, you know, he understands what his job is. And I think just the fact that they're now playing more of a 4-2-3-1. Today they played a 4-3-3, but generally they play a 4-2-3-1. I think it affords him a little bit more license to sort of do his thing where he can sort of run the game from midfield. He can make those deep runs and get goals. And he doesn't have to worry as much about being the lone CDM. I don't think that's the role that ever suited him being the lone CDM. He's played there, but I don't think that's his role. I think his role is to be that shuttler in midfield. And I think he's enjoying it. I think this season, that, that knowing then defined, having that defined role this season, I think we've seen the best of him. Uh, two goals today, absolutely fantastic. And uh, I don't think those will be his last goals of the season. I think he's going to run this game uh, this season. I think he's going to be a key, key player for City this season and a big reason why they 
will prob in all probability they will go on to win the title this season. I think a big part of that Gundogan is going to play a big big role in that. Um, I think he was just uh, amazing. Um, and I also got to talk about Joao Cancelo. That I, I think a lot of people talk about. He also plays as a fullback CDM kind of position. Um, and again, it's wonderful. And I think the reason why he does that is again, it's it's the idea of having two CDMs. Uh, essentially, what they, what what uh, what City want to do is they want to make sure they don't get uh, caught on the break through the middle. So therefore, you know, Cancelo. I think Pep's figured this out is that players are going to teams are going to try to bypass the middle. So essentially, Cancelo then comes in and plays as a central defensive midfielder or a sort of right-sided central midfielder. Um, or right side in midfielder, so he kind of plays there. So his, his role is kind of just to make sure that you know there are no breaks on. And there was a moment when West Brom it was five nil, so it wouldn't have mattered. But there was a moment when West Brom had two on one, uh, and Cancelo just comes and sweeps the ball away. Uh, he was the one, and he just sweeps the ball away. And there's no attack on. So I think he's, he was excellent today as well. Had an amazing performance from him a, as well. Um, and again, the defense though. I mean, you just got to talk about it. I mean, it's just incredible what John Stones. John Stones looks like a completely different player. I think Ruben Diaz has completely transformed that team. I think um, Ruben Diaz will probably be saying at the end of the season, probably early next season, we'll see Ruben Diaz have the same impact uh, for City that Virgil van Dijk had for, for Liverpool in that breakout season as well. Um, in 2019, when they won the when they in 2018 actually when they went to the Champions League final, then they won the final the Champions League the next year in the league next year. I think I think we're going to be saying that about Ruben Diaz. Ruben Diaz is coming into a much more settled team. But I think he's he's probably going to have the same sort of impact as well. That you know, if he hasn't already, he's he's going to have that same sort of impact by the end of the season. We might very well be saying that again. These are all just predictions, opinions. These are not facts. So you know, don't don't don't, don't come at me. But I just just based on what I've seen so far, he just looks like he, he just looks like a complete defender, Ruben Diaz, doesn't he? he? Just doesn't seem to have a mistake in his game anywhere. And somebody, if a City fan who's been watching him more than I have, if you have any comments, please do mention in the comment section if if, you, if you've noticed any weaknesses. I've not, I haven't noticed any weaknesses yet. Um, in this game, but let me know what you think. Um, but I thought City it was a complete performance today. I think that I think that is the one thing. I don't think you can single out a poor performance. I don't think you can say that anybody played too badly. I mean, the second half was a little bit of a drag, but then once you're five nil up, four nil up, five nil up, you know, you kind of expect that, you know. And it was probably good game management as well from City. It was good game management where they kind of slowed the game down. They weren't trying to, you know, go after West Brom and try and score six, seven, eight goals. It was just about, you know. Picking their moments, making sure nobody's too tired, make sure nobody's fatigued. Uh, you know, Laporte gets a few minutes in his under his belt, so he's getting back to fitness. So it was kind of a, a, an exercise. But I thought the first half was was, was just extraordinary, extraordinarily brilliant um, from Manchester City. You know, and then there's not a lot of talking points because there wasn't a lot that happened. I mean, again, the second goal, um, the VAR. I think that was the one controversial moment, um, and a little bit of a controversy. And I think the controversy. Is is twofold. Your first was it offside? To me, when I looked at it from the naked eye, um, and I know you see the lines go against you, but there are a couple of times the lines go for you. I think the lines went for City in this in this in this instance because when I looked at it, and the angle was wrong for me to look at, by the way, because it's a diagonal angle. It should be a straight angle. From the straight angle, I would probably say it was offside. But the camera angle that I was seeing, the diagonal angle, it looked offside. It looked offside to me. The straight angle probably would have said that he was onside. Um, so that's the wrong. Angle. I'll blame that on the angle rather than on anything else. Um, but when the ball, you know, once the ref, you know, has, has faced the flag, it's got to, the play's got to be dead. Now it doesn't, now it's the wrong decision. That's totally fine. And that's happened. It's the wrong decision. But you got to start the play because immediately, I think a few West Brom players stopped playing. They basically, you know, were like, well, the game's going to stop because he's, she's raised the flag. It was the wrong decision. And I think in that case, the ref is to be blamed. But she should not be raising a flag. Um, you know, you, you've got to wait until the play goes dead. That's got to be uh, communicated to the ref. So I thought, I thought the ref made a mistake that she should not have raised the flag because once you raise the flag, everybody stops, right? Because then that's the case of all well, the rest raise the flag, so it's got to be offside. So you know, there's a little bit. You know, would would the goal have been stopped if if the ref if the play had been allowed to continue? Probably not. Probably not. I think you'd be got to be fair there. But you know, once you raise the flag, it creates doubts in the player's mind. So that that's something. But I think I blame them on the ref. I think the ref should be a little bit more conscious of the fact that. Uh, you know, and, and it's hard to say when is when when do you actually raise the flag? You know, at what point do you do you do you do you uh, do you say you know what? Um, this is where there's no goal scoring opportunity because I think the idea was once they made a back pass, it was like well the game's got to stop now because it's a back pass. But anyway, I mean that, that's just a minor complaint. I don't think it would have made a difference to the result anyway. In the end, I think I think City would have won it to the canter. They just looked like they were going to score. It's just a matter of how many they were going to score today. I think they were in that kind of form. There was only six shots on target today, by the way. Six shots from what I what I counted, and they got five goals. So it was just incredible, amazing performance uh, from Manchester City. And on basis of this, and again, this is there's there's a lot of opinions and things flying around. You know, I, I mean, if 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 you are if you are a United fan and you believe that United have a chance of winning the title, you believe United can win the title. That's that's fair enough, and that's on you. 
as as somebody who was watching this game you know trying to understand you know, what 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 city can accomplish this season trying to watch it is you know with as analytical and as as possible i just i can't see past city to win the title this season and i remember i made that same prediction about liverpool a while ago and they kind of fell away but the liverpool i think the injuries have caught up with them i think city um injuries might catch up to them at some point maybe but i mean at the moment they just look unstoppable so that that's again that's just my prediction i think city are going to win it and um, you know we'll we'll know more once a few games pass by i think next week's game against liverpool is going to be critical in term, in terms of what happens but i mean i, I just think that uh, city just look on a completely different level at the moment and so uh, you know that that's just my opinion an underlying feeling at the end of this game but anyway congratulations to all city fans for a great win now you're top of the league and got to be the first time that they've gone top of the league this season i thought they were they were top before but yeah it's the first time that they've gone top of the league so congratulations to you guys and uh, you know the one an- analogy i'll put i won't be able to do tomorrow's reaction show for the man united sheffield united game actually unfortunately i've got another uh, another commitment uh, that i've got to be there for so i won't be able to do the reaction for that but what i will say about tomorrow's game is it's absolutely critical for united to win uh, that game it doesn't matter how they win they have to win but you know with with man united and again i'm only picking man united because they are the closest challengers at the moment to manchester city that could change in a couple of weeks it could change by the end of this week by the way um but uh, but for united i think it's almost like if you ever played age of empires if you ever played um you know sim city you, you know, and i use those analogies because it's like when you play age of empires in an expert mode right um or you or you know what do you notice is that there's always attack after attack after attack and if you're a good enough player i never was that good but if you're a good enough player you can repel attacks um but you know if you're not if you're not an expert player right if you're just like a novice player like a good player what will happen is you'll repel attacks and there'll come a moment where you'll realize the moment you know you 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 just about getting over the line you just get about getting over the line because in expert mode um or whatever the highest difficulty is in age of empires basically the, you know the computer just keeps attacking you right it doesn't matter the computer just finds soldiers to keep attacking you um and uh, and what basically you realize is that the moment you lose one battle um you know it doesn't matter you're never going to recover um it's the same with matches with with sim city as well where you, at at a certain point in the building your city you realize that you've got to make sure that your profits are always above your expenses but at at a certain point you realize that there might come a time where your prof your expenses might just go over your profits and uh, your revenue um in this case and then you know and from there at the moment that goes you're going to go downhill it's going to go downhill it's the moment you lose a battle you're going to go downhill and i think that's kind of the situation with united the moment they lose a game i think i think it's game over for, for united as far as the title chances concerned so just they've just got to keep winning 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 as and when they can but you just kind of feel like there is a loss coming in on the corner um and the moment they lose then it's all over i think that, that, that again that's just the way when i look at united that's the way i look at it um and again people may have different opinions about that and that's totally fine um but that's just the way i see it i just i just can't see city being stopped and the only thing that's keeping united at the top is because they have a lead at the moment and that game in hand <laughs> oh, sorry that game extra that they played i mean that's just what it is but i mean it's just yeah that's just my opinion but we'll see what happens tomorrow uh between man united and sheffield united in the meantime city top of the league absolutely brilliant performance against west brom uh, congratulations to city fans please remember to like this video if you enjoyed what we talked uh, if you enjoyed you know the game and if you enjoyed this reaction please do share in your comments what do you think is going to happen this season with city what do you think was some of the great stuff that city did today just let me know it's always wonderful to hear from you guys and please do subscribe to the channel if you're new I want to keep uh, continuing to grow this channel I want to keep producing more videos so your support really helps with that uh, so please do remember to subscribe to to my channel if you're watching on youtube uh, thank you so much have a great day or night whatever time you're watching this and i will see you again very very soon take care bye